Good to see everyone this morning. Sometimes when I'm traveling to either a, an unknown location that's near or far away, I think back in my history, and I, and I believe just about every man and lady in here will be able to associate with me on this. There's so many things new that's helped us to find our way. Most, most of the time, most of it's coming through satellites in space. And I don't know how many of them are up there, a bunch. But remember when we wanted to go somewhere? <laughs> remember when we'd go to the store first because we needed to buy a map or an atlas so we could find our way where we were going? So when we traveled, we had a map, and usually if me driving, if Beverly didn't want to read the map, I read the map and drove. And no wonder we had hurt the entire family. But sometimes you had a co-pilot, and she'd go over the map with you and tell you, up, up here, you know, you'll turn right. And I, I'll never forget any of that. There's no telling how many gas stations I have been to so I could get a free map. Boy, didn't it make you mad when you had to pay for them? <laughs> you want them for free. There's no telling how many gas stations you and I have been to to get those maps. We'd fold it. We'd drive along holding the map in our lap, trying to drive and do that. But then all of a one day, we got a deal called a Garmin. You remember that? The Garmin. Boy, we hung it on our windshield or down there on our dash, and we used that Garmin, and boy, it would tell us everywhere we were going to go, how to get there, and we were just amazed, weren't we? We were just amazed. <laughs> Today, we either have a navigation system built into our car that runs out, and you have to drive, renew it for an unbelievable amount, or even better and more accurate, you have your phone. You have your phone, and Beverly catches me every time when I want to tell the kids or the grandkids how to get here or how to get back to where they come from. I said, well, you go down this road, and, and, and you're going to come to a highway there in Frost, and it says to Italy, and you know, you, you're giving them all this, and then Beverly go, Tim, Tim, they have their phone. And, and I forget about this. I keep wanting to do it the old way, you know. And, and I, boy, your phone is amazing. It, it, it's just absolutely amazing. Well, God has a road map. God has since the beginning of time. In Matthew chapter 5 through 7, Jesus came, gave the Sermon on the Mount, and he gave us positive, practical teaching about our lives and how, to, how that we are to live in this world. He set forth a choice of paths for us to take. And he warns against us being misled. And he shows us the importance of following the revealed directions that he gave us so that we can reach our eternal destination. The Lord has placed road signs to direct us to our heavenly home. Like Abraham... We have to realize that we're strangers and pilgrims on this earth, Hebrews 11 and verse 13, that God never planned for this body, you and I, to live our lives all the time and after on this earth because he has something far better for us. And just before Jesus died on the cross, he told his apostles in John 14, verse 1 through 3, let not your heart be troubled. He's talking to us too today. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again, receive you into myself, and there you may be also. And then he said, you know the way where I'm going. He said in verse 4, you know the way I'm going. And then in verse 5, what did Thomas do? Thomas says, we don't know where you're going, Lord. <laughs> we don't know the way. And in verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but through me. 
You see, this life we live on this earth, whether it's 40, 60 years, 80 years, 150 years like Darwin, it's nothing compared to an eternity. Every time, all the time that we have is for preparation of our soul of where we're going to spend that eternity. That's why we're only pilgrims here. We're just pilgrim, pilgrims passing through this life. And we have to take the right road, the right route. And God has revealed that to us. Abraham was a man of great faith. Great faith. He was chosen by God to leave his home, leave his family, everything that he knew, his job, all the things that he was accustomed to. And God has chose him to leave and go to a homeland for him. And all he had great faith. In Genesis 12 and verse 1, Now the Lord said to Abram, Go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to a land which I'll show you. He's going to show him. He was to leave his family, leave his relatives, leave his father's house. Everything that he owned, I guess, he, it, uh, he just took everything he could on carts. <laughs> he was 75 years old. And he's going to go to a land that God's going to show him. And God's giving promises that eventually bring the, our Savior to this world. Go to a land, God said, that I'm going to show you. Hebrews 11 and verse 8, he did that. By faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed by going out to a place where he was to receive for an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. His only road map was God's assurance, God's promises. Jesus referred to this life that we live as a journey. Matthew 7, verse 13 and 14. Enter through the narrow gate. For the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who enter through it. For the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life. Now listen, and there are a few that find it. Jesus shows us in this life that we live here on this earth. There are two ways to live it. You either go the narrow way or the broad way. Our road to our future after our life is over on this earth. We either choose the narrow way or the broad way. There are no other directions to go. The broad way leads to Satan and destruction. The narrow way leads to God and everlasting life. Every one of us want to go that way. The broad way is the easy way. It's an easy route to take. It's a popular way, isn't it? The broad way. It's a popular way. Most people want to take that route because it didn't take any effort to go this way. Everybody's doing it, they say. Exodus 23 and verse 12, verse 2, I'm sorry. Exodus 23 and verse 2 says, God says, you shall not follow the masses in doing evil. Noah lived in a world full of wickedness, not much different from the world we live in today. In Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5, he said, Then the Lord saw the wickedness of man was great on this earth, and every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So God chose Noah and his family because only he and his family were following the narrow way the will of God. Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord, we're told in Genesis 6 and verse 8. Genesis 6 and verse 14, he gave him directions. Go make yourself an ark of gopher wood. And then the great worldwide flood followed, and then there comes a time, you see, when God has had enough. And everyone except Noah was traveling the broad way, and now there is a, a, a time for an accounting to face the judgment and Almighty God. And he completely destroyed this world. 
by, by water. The next time, it's by fire. The narrow way is the easy way to find. It really is. The narrow way is the easy way to find. And it's easy to identify. It's not a secret route. It's nothing secret about it. The narrow way is not easy to live, and it can get hard. And there are many who say, oh, no, it just costs too much. Matthew 16 and verse 24, Jesus says, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Satan and his servants is, makes the way hard for us. Hard way for us to travel sometimes because he doesn't want us to go God's way according to God's directions. But the goal of going the narrow way is not easy. It's easy to find the way. It's easy to find and identify that route. But it's not easy. And Jesus knows it's not easy. The trials and all the things that happen to us in this life. In John 15 and verse 19, Jesus says, If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you're not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, because of this, the world hates you. In fact, we can expect no better, you and I, when we follow in his steps to the best of our ability. The narrow way is unpopular. It's unpopular to the world because sometimes it requires a great sacrifice. And whatever it costs, but it's worth it. As a Christian, it's worth every price we have to pay for a home in heaven. While on this earth, we're traveling a narrow way. We have true peace and happiness. But listen, that true peace and that happiness, it's in our soul where it counts, where it needs to be. It's in our soul. And what a wonderful reward he has for his faithful at the end of the route at the end of the road, at the end of the way. Look at Isaiah chapter 35 with me. I love this chapter, this verse. Isaiah 35, all these verses, 8 through 10. Isaiah 35, verses 8 through 10. A highway will be there, a roadway, and it will be called the highway of holiness, and the unclean will travel, will not travel on it. But it will be for him who walks that way. Isn't that beautiful? And fools will not wander on it. No lion will be there, nor will any vicious beast be, go up on it. And they would not be found there, but the redeemed will walk there. And the ransom of the Lord will return and come with joyful shouting to Zion with everlasting joy upon their heads, and they will find gladness and joy and sorrow and the sighing and sighing, and, all, and that will all flee away, he says. Oh, what a beautiful verse. But those of us who are traveling the narrow way, we have to beware. Many will try to convince us that, that is there, there's another way that's so much easier there are many false roads and routes in this world. In Matthew 7 and verse 15, Jesus says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ravenous wolves. Jesus says you'll know them by their fruits, verse 17 through 19. So every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad, bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, nor can a Bad tree produce good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit, that's you and I, is cut down and thrown into the fire. God constantly warned Israel, and he constantly warns us today that there are those who want to try to get us to get on the broad way. Isaiah 5, verse 20 and 21, Woe to you! 
They call evil good and good evil, who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness, who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and clever in their own sight. There are many teachers today who want to tickle the ears of the hearers. They want to convince us that they know a better way. And we as Christians have always got to be alert. Satan wants us to take the broad way. He'll do everything he can to convince us to switch the route, to go the broad way, not the narrow way. He tries to tempt us. He shows us that, oh, what an easy route it is. And when Israel strayed off the narrow way, God would call them back, wouldn't he, to the right path. And he's still calling them back, you and I today, to do the same thing, to get on the narrow way. When Israel strayed off that narrow way, Jeremiah 6 and verse 16, Thus saith the Lord, this goes for us today, Stand by the ways and see. Ask for the ancient paths where the good way is and walk in it, and you'll find rest for your souls. Oh, what a promise. Sadly, there are so many, so many in this world, including Christians, that don't want to listen. They don't want to follow that route. They see no need. They want to follow the false road map. Darwin and I talked to a man one time, one day. He was a member of the church. He wanted the broad way. He was on the narrow way, but now he wants the broad way. And we looked at him and said, what are you thinking in your mind to want to go that way? But he saw no need. He wanted to follow that false road map. He wanted to turn aside the fables and what they want, what he wanted. In 2 Timothy verse 4, verse 3 and 4, we're told that. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance with their own desires and will turn away their ears from the truth and will turn aside the myths. And that's exactly what that man who was a member of the Lord's body was doing. I want to go the broad way. I want to turn aside and go to the myths. I want to go to where everybody's accepted. They just want to travel the broad way. It's easy and it's tempting. It sounds so good. Boy, they sell a really a bill of goods, boy. And it sounds so promising. It sounds so good. And everything they say is so convincing. You know what? I spent a lot of time thinking about how I grew up. My family was on the Broadway. Oh, they were religious. They were religious. They never attended, but they were religious. It's all I knew. All I knew was the Broadway. No one had ever taken the time to show me the narrow way. I had never understood it. All of a sudden, barely showing me the narrow way. Hey, wait a minute. Here, what is this route? What is this route? I didn't know about this route. All I knew was the broad way. I never questioned anyone. I never questioned my family. I never questioned, any, questioned anything. I had no idea there was another route. The route that God expected you to get on. The narrow way until I was 20 years old. I had never traveled that route. And then when I decided to travel that right road, that right route, have you ever had your mother beg you? Have you ever had your mother stand in front of you with your wife and say, oh, don't do that. Don't go anywhere like that. Don't go to that place. Be anything but that. Hey, you hadn't lived until you've had that. I remember when I first got on the right road, 
and I'm following the right map and going that narrow way. I was getting gas at a gas station, hadn't been a week <laughs> since I became a real Christian. And I pulls up this guy to the, from the, to the gas station, and it's my brother's friend. And oh, he just chastised me. Now, I didn't know what to do. I'm a young man. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say to the man. He accused me of being a traitor, a traitor to my family. And I was, I guess. Sometimes even teachers take the broad way even though they may know better in their heart. But they fall to the pressure of others that that's what they want to hear. And so they teach it or preach it. The same thing happened in Jesus' day. When the Pharisees knew Jesus taught the truth, they knew it. But they're afraid to follow him. In John 12 and verse 43, for they love the approval of men rather than the approval of God. Can you believe anyone would go that way? Take that route. Sometimes teachers are just false. And they convince us to take that broad way and they'll do anything for financial gain. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 through 3, we're warned again by God. But false prophets also arose among the people. Among the people. And there will also be false teachers among you who secretly introduced destructive heresies, even denying the master who brought them, bringing swift destruction upon them. Many will follow their sensuality, and because of them, the way of the truth will be maligned and their greed, they will exploit you with false words, and their judgment from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. We also know that there are some in 2 Timothy 3 and verse 13 who do not know any better, like me. I've been deceived. They were deceived. And people are being deceived every day. And now they're deceiving others to take them the broad way. We can make sure that we stay on the narrow way. First John 4 and verse 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. The Bible gives us a perfect example of how to test. How to test if people are preaching the truth and teaching the truth and going on the narrow way and seeking the narrow way. It's the people of Berea that Paul preached to. Acts 17, verse 10 and 11, the brethren immediately <coughs> sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. And when he arrived, they went to the synagogue of the Jews. Now, they were more noble-minded than those in Thessalonica. Now, listen. For they received the word with great eagerness, examining the scriptures to see whether these things were so. That's what we have to do. You have to watch me. I want you to watch me. I want you to correct me. This is how we study God's Word, to be good students of His Word. Every word in the Bible is complete and perfect. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 and 17. Every teacher is tested by the Word of God. I want to be. If you have been a, on a trip across the country, and you know how easy it is to get lost. And if we don't follow the right map, we miss our turn, we have to turn around and go back. I did many times to get on the right road. We do that today. If we're traveling the easy and the broad way, and if we do not know the Word of God and we just keep going and refuse to go back, refuse to change our route, that's the broad way going to end in destruction, our destruction. 
or we may never learn of our mistake until it's too late. In all our traveling on the highway of life, there's a necessity of obedience to God. Matthew 7, verse 21 through 23. Jesus says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. There's not one of us in here that want to hear those words. Depart from me? No thanks. We want to hear, well done, you good and faithful servant. This has always been true through the centuries. God rewards obedience to his will and his word, and he punishes those that are in the disobedient to him. It's just, that's the way it is. That's the way God expects. King Saul got off on the wrong road. He disobeyed Almighty God. He thought he had a better plan than God. He even thought he would make a sacrifices to God instead, of, go, instead of, of God's way. I want you to look at that with me right quick. Look at first. It's 1 Samuel 15. I got to get there too. I want you to look at that. 1 Samuel 15, beginning verse 22. Now I'm going to back up. I'm going to back up. I want you to back up 1 Samuel 15 and go to verse 3. This is God telling King Saul what he expected him to do. Now go and strike the Amalek and utterly destroy it all that he has and do not spare him, but do not spare him and put to death both man and woman and child and infant, ox and sheep and camel and donkeys. That's what God told him. Verse 8, look what he did. He captured Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. Verse 9, but Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and the oxen and the fatting and the lambs and all that was good and were not willing to destroy them utterly, but everything despised and worthless they utterly destroyed. He made that determination. Verse 10, then the word of the Lord came to Samuel, saying, I regret that I have made Saul king, for he has turned his back from following me and has not carried out my commands. And Samuel was distressed and cried to the Lord all night. Verse 16, And the Lord sent you on a mission and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are exterminated. This was, is what... <coughs> The prophet is telling Samuel, the prophet is telling King Saul right there. Verse 19, why did you not obey the voice of the Lord, but rushed upon the spoil and did what was evil in the sight of the Lord? Then Saul said to Samuel, verse 20, I did not obey the voice of the Lord and went on a mission on which the Lord had sent me and have brought back Agag, the king of the Amalekites, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took some of the spoil, the sheep and the oxen and choicest things and devoted to, the, to destruction to sacrifice the Lord your God at Gilgad. Verse 24. Then Saul said to Samuel, Don't you listen? I have sinned. I have indeed transgressed the command of the Lord with your words because I feared the people and listened to their voice. He's switching the blame right here. Now, therefore, please pardon my sin and return with me that I may worship the Lord. Verse 26, But Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with you, and you have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. He wanted it his way. The same principle is still at work under the new covenant of Jesus Christ. Jesus said in what we read a few moments ago, the only ones that are going to be saved are on the right road. 
who do the will of the Father in heaven, Matthew 7 and verse 21. This remains a pattern for our life. There are no substitutes. We're justified by our faith, Romans 5 and verse 1. Our faith motivates us to obey Him. Hebrews chapter 11, God gives us examples of those who demonstrated their faith. By faith, Enoch was translated. He didn't die. He walked with God, verse 5, Hebrews 11. By faith, Noah prepared an ark, verse 7, to save his family. By faith, Abraham obeyed, verse 8. And on and on and on of those who obeyed the faith. Each one of these did what God said by faith. Let me ask you something. Are you doing what God said by faith? And that includes obedience to his gospel. Do you want to go to heaven? Then follow the right road. God has given us the right road. It's easy. It's that simple. And there are many in our world today that don't want to do that. They want to pick their own way. They want to pick the broad way, the easy way. They think that's the only way to go. It's so popular. They think to themselves, there's got to be some other way than what God wants me to do. And they search till they find it. And they say to us, what's wrong with the road we've chosen? <laughs> Luke 6 and verse 46. Jesus says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? It's his plan of salvation. It's not ours to make our own. We don't have that right. You know, it's so sad, and like in my family, I had a, a, his brother, my uncle, my dad's brother was an elder in the church. <laughs> Why didn't he talk to him? <laughs> the only way to show our faith in him is to obey him, to do exactly what he asked us to do and quit making excuses. Are we traveling the highway of life? Are we traveling the broad way, the easy way, the popular way that sounds so good? Or are we traveling the, the small through the small gate, the narrow way, on our way? And it can be hard. That way it can be hard and there are few that travel on it. We want to be one of those few. The Lord tells us how to get on the right road. He tells us how to be saved by believing in Him and repenting of our sins and confessing that He is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and being baptized for the remission of our sins in the watery grave and come out as a new person in Christ. Listen, there's great rewards. And to stay on that road means to live a faithful until you die. That's on the right road. That's on the narrow way. And there are great rewards for obedience to him. It's worth any price that we had to suffer to go the narrow way, to obey him in our life and to have a home in heaven. The question for us is, which way are we taking? Are we taking the broad, easy way or the narrow way that leads to life everlasting? We can either speculate and go that way or we can follow the truth of God and we know it's a sure way. We can go the sure way and any other way is speculation. There are only a few. Jesus says it takes a narrow way. There's only a few. There are Christians and we have to ask ourselves as a Christian, have we gotten on the wrong road? Are we going the wrong way? Are you on the road that leads to destruction? If so, we need to turn around and stay on the narrow way before it's too late. We can help in any way this morning. Won't you come while we stand and sing?